Friends, welcome to the tutorial series on network analysis made simple. This is a module wise EC network analysis paper solution series. In this tutorial, we are going to solve HTU CBCS scheme network analysis questions of module 2 of June July 2017 paper of syllabus 15 EC 34. Friends, I prefer to emphasize on concepts, strategy and thinking process rather than detailed mathematical steps. I am sure you are well equipped with required mathematical skills. Hope you will enjoy the travel. Let's go ahead. Friends, first let us solve the question on Milman's theorem. We are required to find current through the load resistance RL in the network shown in figure. First, let me discuss the strategy and thinking process before we start solving the problem. Observe the given network. There are three alternators connected in parallel across the load resistance RL. One source is of 2 angle 30 volts with an internal resistance of 10 ohm in series. Another alternator is of 10 angle 0 volts with an internal impedance of J10 ohm. Yet another alternator is of 15 angle 45 volts with an internal impedance of minus J10 ohm. Also, observe that the polarity of all the alternators is same. Friends, we know according to Milman's theorem, the given network can be transformed into a single voltage source network of say V equivalent in series with equivalent impedance Z equivalent connected in series across the load branch as shown. Where V equivalent is equal to summation of VIGI divided by summation of GI. In this case, we know summation of VIGI is equal to V1G1 plus V2G2 plus V3G3 all positive because the polarity of all the alternators is same and summation of gi is equal to g1 plus g2 plus g3 and we know z equivalent is equal to 1 divided by summation of gi and that is equal to 1 divided by g1 plus g2 plus g3 so let us now find v equivalent and z equivalent observe the given network Summation of VIGI is equal to 2 angle 30 into 1 divided by 10 plus 10 angle 0 into 1 divided by J10 plus 15 angle 45 into 1 divided by minus J10. By solving, we get summation of VIGI is equal to 0 0.9 angle 169 and summation of GI we know is equal to 1 upon 10 plus 1 upon J10 plus 1 upon minus J10 and by solving it we get summation of GI is equal to 0 0.1 mo note that but Z equivalent is equal to 1 divided by summation of GI and that is equal to 1 divided by 0 0.1 which will give us 10 ohm but V equivalent is equal to summation of phi i g i divided by summation of g i. By substituting the values, we get V equivalent is equal to 9 angle 169 volts. Friends, using V equivalent and Z equivalent, the circuit drawn is shown in figure. We know current in the load resistance RL is IL is equal to V equivalent divided by Z equivalent plus RL and by substituting the values we get IL is equal to 0 0.3 angle 169 amperes. Friends, is it not simple? Friends, Next, we shall solve the question on maximum power transfer theorem. In this question, we are required to state the maximum power transfer theorem. Also, we are required to prove that P max is equal to P7 in square divided by 4 RL. 
First, let me explain the strategy and thinking process. The question is straightforward, meaning we can take the DC circuit and state the theorem in general and provide the proof. That's all. So, first let us state the theorem. The maximum power transfer theorem states that the given network across the load branch can be transferred into a single voltage source of V7 in, in series with the resistance R7 in, as shown in figure, where V7 in is the open circuit voltage VOC obtained by opening the load branch, keeping all the sources as they are and finding the open circuit voltage V7 in as shown in figure. To find VOC, keep all the sources as they are and use a suitable circuit solving technique and find VOC. And R7 in is the Thevenin's resistance. Thevenin's resistance, friends, can be obtained in two ways. One, if the given network contains all independent sources, then we can make all independent sources zero and you know to make voltage source zero short circuit it and to make current source zero open circuit it and looking into the network find R7 in by reducing the network. Second, if the network contains combination of independent and dependent sources keeping all the sources as they are and short circuit the terminals A and B and by using suitable circuit solving technique find ISC and find R7 in using R7 in is equal to VOC upon ISC. Now let's provide the proof. To prove that P max is equal to V7 in square divided by 4 RL consider the circuit shown in figure. We know IL is equal to P7 in divided by R7 in plus RL, but P is equal to IL squared into RL. By substituting the values, we get P is equal to V7 in square into RL divided by R7 in plus RL square. To find the condition for maximum power transfer across the load RL, we need to find dp by drl and equate it to zero. So, dp by drl is equal to v7 in square which is constant into d by drl of rl divided by r7 in plus rl whole square. By differentiating it with respect to rl, we get dp by drl is equal to v7 in square into the denominator into the differentiation of the numerator minus numerator into the differentiation of the denominator divided by denominator square. This is u by v form that you know. So, by equating dp by drl is equal to 0, we get R7 in plus RL square minus 2RL into bracket R7 in plus RL equal to 0. By solving it, we get RL is equal to R7 in. Now, by substituting this condition of RL is equal to R7 in in the equation of power, we get P max is equal to P7 in square into RL divided by RL plus RL whole square which will give us P max is equal to V7 in square divided by 4 times RL. Friends, next let us solve the question on Thevenin's theorem. We are required to find the Thevenin's equivalent circuit of the circuit shown in figure. First, let me discuss the strategy and thinking process. Observe the given network. The network contains one voltage controlled current source of 0.1 V1 amperes in parallel with 20 ohm resistance. Another independent voltage source of 100 volts. 
so to find the earth heaven we need to find both voc and isc and find the earth heaven in using earth heaven in is equal to voc divided by isc friends the problem is very simple but very tricky let's first find voc consider the given network shown in figure since the dependent current source is in parallel across 20 ohm by converting it we get the circuit shown in figure note the polarity of voltage controlled voltage source is such that it will drive the current in the same direction as that of the original dependent current source also note since the terminals a and b are open no current will flow through 20 ohm resistance this is very important to identify therefore by writing the kirchhoff's loop equation for the loop we get v1 plus 100 minus 2v1 is equal to 0 so we get v1 or v7 in or voc is equal to 100 volts to find isc consider the network shown in figure note since the terminals a and b are short circuited v1 is equal to 0 and voltage controlled voltage source of 2v1 also will become zero therefore again by writing the loop equation we get ISC is equal to 100 divided by 20 and that gives us 5 amperes that is so simple friends therefore knowing voc and isc r theta n is equal to voc upon isc and by substituting the values we get r theta n is equal to 20 ohm therefore using v theta n and r theta n the thevenin equivalent circuit across a and b is as shown in figure friends finally let us solve the question on superposition theorem in this problem we are required to find current i in 6 ohm resistance using superposition theorem first let me discuss the strategy and thinking process observe the given network there are two independent sources one voltage source of 18 volts in series with one ohm another ideal current source of 3 amperes also observe that there is one voltage controlled voltage source of 2 vx volts where vx is the voltage across one ohm resistance in my opinion though 18 volts is a practical voltage source which is convertible we need not convert it we also know that while applying superposition theorem we have to consider one source at a time making other sources zero not dependent sources should be kept as they are so friends first consider only the voltage source of 18 volts the current source is made zero by opening it as shown in figure let i1 be the current in 6 ohm resistance now you find that the circuit is turned out to be a single loop network so by writing the kirchhoff's voltage equation for the loop we get 6 i1 minus 2 vx plus 1 into i1 minus 18 is equal to 0 let it be equation 1 now what is vx in terms of i1 that we have to find out note i1 in 1 ohm is flowing from left to right also we know that the current in a passive element flows from a higher potential point to a lower potential point but the given polarity of vx is positive on the right hand side and negative on the left hand side so vx is equal to minus into bracket 1 into i1 hope you understood that 
substituting this value of Vx in equation 1, we get 6i1 minus 2 into bracket minus i1 plus 1 into i1 minus 18 is equal to 0. By solving this simple equation, we get i1 is equal to 2 amperes. Now, by considering only current source of 3 amperes and making 18 volts voltage source 0 by short circuiting it, we get the circuit shown in figure. Let i2 be the current in 6 ohm resistance. Now, observe the circuit. Vx is the voltage across 1 ohm. Look, Vx has polarity positive on the right hand side and negative on the left hand side. To find I2, let us apply node voltage method. Let V1 be the unknown node voltage as shown. Observe that V1 is equal to Vx since the polarity of both Vx and V1 are same and it is a parallel circuit. Now, by writing the Kirchhoff's nodal equation, for node V1, we get V1 by 1 minus 3 plus V1 plus 2 Vx divided by 6 is equal to 0. But we know Vx is equal to V1. By substituting for Vx is equal to V1, we get V1 divided by 1 minus 3 plus V1 plus 2 V1 divided by 6 equal to 0. By solving it, we get 9 V1 is equal to 18 and V1 is equal to 2 volts. Friends, for convenience, the balance equation is reproduced here and by observing it, you find that I2 is equal to V1 plus 2 Vx divided by 6. By substituting Vx is equal to V1 is equal to 2 volts, we get I2 is equal to 1 ampere. So, finally, considering both the sources, we get current in 6 ohm resistance I is equal to I1 plus I2 and that is equal to 2 plus 1 and we get I is equal to 3 amperes. Is it not simple friends? Friends, after going through this tutorial, I hope you are convinced and also I believe that identifying the connectivity of the network elements in the given network is the most important skill that is required. By thinking process seems to be a difficult problem can be transformed into the most easiest one, you know. Writing Kirchhoff's loop and nodal equations are another important skills one has to acquire. So, to enhance your confidence, I suggest you go through my earlier tutorials on network terminology, analysis of series and parallel circuits, star delta conversion and tutorials on network theorems. Hope this tutorial has kindled some of your thoughts. If so, please forward your feedback and suggestions to my email. Thank you for watching this video.